Today, we're gonna take a quick trip down the graphics pipeline, so buckle up. As I said last week, we're starting a new series on the basics of creating shaders using shader graph tools. We're gonna to be using Unity and Unreal Engine 5 graph tools, but you should be able to apply what you learn here to any node-based shader editor. Before we start creating shaders, there are some fundamentals that I want to make sure everyone understands. So today we're going to do a brief overview of how the graphics hardware processes the shader that you create to generate the images on the screen. Understanding the basics of what the hardware is doing will make you more effective at making shaders that are efficient as well as beautiful. So be patient and pay close attention while we go through this. So. Here we have the diagram of the graphics pipeline. The data starts out on the CPU, where your 3D program, Unity, Unreal, Maya, or a game, passes vertex data through DirectX or OpenGL to the graphics driver. The driver then sends the data to the GPU's front end, which is the part of the graphics chip designed for communicating with the CPU. The data then gets sent to the programmable vertex processor, and this is the part of the graphics chip where your vertex shader runs. The vertex data consists of vertex positions in object space, UV coordinates, vertex colors, and normals. The most important thing that the vertex processor does is transform the vertex positions from object space to screen projection space so they can be turned into triangles and drawn to the screen. But the vertex shader that you create can also animate the positions of the vertices, scroll the UV coordinates, bend the vertex normals, and even calculate lighting and store it in the vertex colors. When programmable graphics hardware was brand new, most of the work on the GPU was done here at the vertex stage. But now the vertex shader mostly just does the vertex transforms and most of the magic happens in the pixel shader. However, if there are operations in your shader that can be moved from the pixel shader back to the vertex shader, like scrolling the UVs or calculating fog, for example, you can speed up performance a lot by doing these calculations per vertex instead of per pixel. The next thing that happens is primitive assembly. The graphics chip connects all of the vertices together to create triangles. So the result of the vertex shader combined with the primitive assembly is triangles in screen projection space. Then the data gets passed to the rasterization and interpolation unit. The job of this hardware is to convert the triangles into pixels on the screen. So instead of just having a set of triangles, we have pixels on the screen that represent the triangle. This process is a bit like opening an Adobe Illustrator file in Photoshop. The points, curves, and lines in Illustrator file are converted into pixels in the Photoshop file. And that's what's happening here at the rasterization step. The hardware is converting our triangles into pixels. The other thing that happens during this step is called interpolation. The data that was stored in each of the vertices is interpolated to the pixels. So for example, with vertex color, we have a blue vert here on the left and a green vert here on the right. All of the pixels in between get a linear gradient blend from blue to green. As you can see, that same thing here is happening with this red vert at the top. This also applies to UV coordinates and normals the data gets smoothly interpolated from the vertices into the pixels. Next, that interpolated pixel data is sent to the programmable pixel processor. And this is where your pixel shader runs. It takes the incoming data from the vertex shader and additional input data from the CPU to create the final results. Traditionally, the output of the pixel processor has been the final colored pixel for the screen. And this then goes for some final raster processing before getting output to the screen. However, most modern game engines use deferred lighting, which means that the pixel processor is outputting color, normal, metal mask, and roughness data 
instead of just a color to, to add to the screen. This data is written to an internal G buffer, and then the final lighting calculations happen with the data from those buffers. The main thing to take away from this is the understanding of where in the pipeline your shaders are running. The graphics chip can do calculations per vertex or per pixel. It's almost always cheaper to do the calculations in the vertex shader. With a lot of things, that's not possible. But when it is, you can get a performance boost by moving calculations into the vertex shader. So now that we've taken a look at the graphics pipeline, let's jump into Unreal and Unity and take a look at a couple of different ways you can tell uh, where your shaders are running in the vertex shader or the pixel shader. All right, so here we are inside Unreal Engine 5, and I'm just kind of jumping right into the deep end here uh, with some kind of advanced concepts, but um, don't worry, I'm gonna step back a little bit and um, begin at the beginning next week with an introduction to how this UI works and everything. But uh, for this week, what I wanted to do was uh, show you a couple of methods for using the vertex shader in, uh, in the material editor in Unreal and also in Unity. So uh, what I've got here is an example where I am sampling a, a texture map and I'm passing in some UV coordinates. And I have a couple of nodes set up here that are set up to animate the UV coordinates. So if I take my regular UV coordinates and I add them together with this bit of math here, uh, what you'll see over here is that now my UVs are animating. And because I'm using a sine wave, they're animating uh, back and forth. Now, if we take a look at our stats down here at the bottom, you can see that I'm currently using 152 instructions. And if I just wire my texture coordinates in directly, now I've dropped to 148. And what that means is this set of nodes here that's doing my animation is costing about four instructions in the pixel shader. Now, one of the things that I can do to make this shader cheaper is I can actually do this UV coordinate math in the vertex shader instead. And the way that I do that is by using this, uh, this node called vertex interpolation. So I'm gonna add a vertex interpolator. And what this node does, you can see that here on the left, it has a VS socket for incoming. And here on the right, it has a PS socket for outgoing. And what this means is everything coming into this uh, node is done in the vertex shader and everything going out is done in the pixel shader. So this node represents that vertex interpolation step that we talked about a minute ago in the pipeline where the graphics hardware is taking the properties that are calculated per vertex and interpolating them to the pixels. And so if I plug this part of the shader into my vertex interpolator, and then plug my vertex interpolator into the UV socket of my texture, now when the shader recompiles, you can see that I'm still doing all of this math, but it's only taking 148 uh, instructions. And so basically I'm getting this for a significantly reduced cost. But if we take a look at our base pass vertex shader, now you can see that I've got 115 instructions in the vertex shader versus if I just wire this in directly, now I have 111. So I've basically moved these four instructions from the pixel shader to the vertex shader. And I've been able to do that uh, to reduce the cost of the shader quite a bit. So now my pixel shader is cheaper my vertex shader is a little bit more expensive, but that doesn't really matter very much. Um, doing things in the vertex shader is, is pretty cheap. And you can see down here at the bottom where it says user interpolators custom two. That means my U and my V coordinate are taking up two of the channels of the available user interpolators because I'm using this vertex interpolator here. Now there is a limited number of those slots and so you can't go crazy and use a lot of these nodes. Um, but if you do have a lot of math that you're doing on things like um, 
position or normal or UVs. If you do that math using a vertex interpolator and force that math into the vertex shader, you can get a pixel shader that's that's cheaper. So that's a really nice optimization. All right, let me show you one other way that you can use the vertex shader inside of Unreal. Here is a little bit of code that I have set up, or uh, shader nodes actually, that I've set up to animate the position of my uh, shader ball over here. So if I wire this into the world position offset socket uh, and let it compile, now you can see I've got a bouncing ball. And what that means is I'm, I'm doing this math in the vertex shader to move uh, the vertices of my model. And so you can see now I'm using two different methods. Uh, the first method animates the UV coordinates in the vertex shader. And the second here animates the uh, position offset in the vertex shader. And you can see now my vertex shader instruction count has gone up to 121. So um, the, the math that I'm doing here is taking about six instructions in the vertex shader. But like I said, vertex shaders are pretty cheap. Uh, so you shouldn't uh, need to worry about that too much. So uh, like I said, if you can move things from the pixel shader into the vertex shader, uh, you can make a, a cheaper shader overall. All right, now let's switch over to Unity and take a look at the same thing. All right, so here we are in Unity, and you can see that I've written a shader that does exactly the same thing. Uh, so down here, I've got the nodes that do the... Um, UV coordinate animation. Let me just plug this in. And then up here, you can see I've got the nodes that do uh, the position animation. Now, there is a, a pretty big difference between Unity and Unreal here. Uh, in Unreal, I use the vertex interpolator node to tell something to happen in the vertex shader. Uh, but in Unity, I actually have this node here. And instead of calling it the root node in Unity, this is called the master stack. Uh, and it's basically a customizable inputs, uh, customizable inputs for the root. And so I can choose in the vertex shader to input positions, normals, and tangents. And everything that I plug into these three input blocks happens in the vertex shader. And then down here in the pixel shader, or the fragment program as they're calling it, um, have color and all the other inputs here. So you can see that I've got my position animation going into the vertex shader and happening in the vertex shader here, plugged into the vertex position. And down here, I've got my animated UV coordinates, but I'm not able to do uh, the animated UV coordinates in the vertex shader as far as I know. Now, those of you that know Unity better than I do, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's not, you're not able to, uh, to do the same optimization that I did in Unreal where I'm doing this UV animation in the vertex shader instead. Uh, so in this case, I'm just doing it in the pixel shader. Um, but like I said, uh, in Unity, you are able to animate the position of the vertices. Uh, you can animate or change the normals in the vertex shader and also the tangents. Uh, so in both game engines, those are the ways that you do things in the vertex shader instead of the pixel shader uh, to save a little bit of performance. So I hope this little diagram has been helpful for you and that when we looked at the uh, shader editors themselves, you were able to see that some of the operations were happening here in the vertex processor or the vertex shader. And some of them was, some of the operations were happening here uh, in the pixel shader. And that doing operations per pixel is more expensive than doing operations here per vertex. All right. Thanks for watching this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, next week, we're going to start at the beginning. I'm going to show you how to load up the editor, how to make a new material or a new shader from scratch, and how to get going with some of the very most basic shader nodes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week.